Hey guys, I'm back again and I have the last of my Christmas book haul. So I'm going to start really quickly. First of all, I have, I have the completed or the collected essays of Ralph Ellison. Now this is modern library classics edition of the collected essays of Ralph Ellison. Now I decided to pick this one up because basically the only thing I've read by Ralph Ellison is this one, which is Invisible Man, which I'm sure you've seen and heard people talk about. And I read that many years ago and I may be due for a reread soon, but I wanted to also pick up this work because then it would give me an idea about some of his other writing and things like that. So that's why I picked this one up. Then I picked up A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. Now this is a vintage books, I think they call this one. And this was long listed for the National Book Award in 2013. It basically takes place in a village in Chechnya and the main character I think is eight-year-old Hava. And yeah, probably some stuff, tough stuff going on in this novel. But it was recommended highly by Denny over at From the Shelf and uh, Chelsea, Chelsea from Chelsea in a book and by a slew of other people who have talked about this book. So definitely I will be getting into this. Next, I picked up, finally, I picked up Mr. Fox and I picked up Boy, Snow and Bird because actually Mr. Fox has been on my TBR for quite a while. And Bo Bo Boy, Snow, and Bird, that novel, it's, it really should be interesting. It says on the back, Boy, Novak turns 20 and decides to try for a brand new life. Flax Hill, Massachusetts isn't exactly a welcoming town, but it does have the virtue of being the last stop on the bus route she took from New York. Flax Hill is also the hometown of Arturo Whitman. Craftsman, widower, and father of Snow. Then it says, Snow is mild-mannered, radiant, and deeply cherished, exactly the sort of little girl boy never was, and boy is utterly beguiled by her. If Snow displays a certain inscrutability at times, that's simply a characteristic she shares with her father, harmless, until boy gives birth to Snow's sister, Bird. And it goes on. And so, yeah, the back of that, it sounds awesome. Now, Mr. Fox, I don't really have a great idea about what this one is about, but I know that it has a strong magical realism theme in it. It says, it's a bright afternoon in 1938 and Mary Fox is in a confrontational mood. St. John Fox, celebrated novelist, hasn't seen her in six years. He's unprepared for her afternoon visit, not least because she doesn't exist. He's, in, he's infatuated with her, but he also made her up. That's what's on the back of the book. So that sounds really interesting too. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm probably going to read Mr. Fox first, since this was the first novel, and then go with, with Boy, Snow, and Bird. All right. And then next, I picked up The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector. And this is by a Brazilian writer. Now, it was one of my lovely subscribers. I think her name is Juliana. If I'm wrong, please tell me what your name is below. I, I asked her to give me some names of Hispanic writers, you know, because I, you know, I only know the classics, you know, like I know Juno Diaz and I know Gabriel Garcia Marquez and I know Is Isabel Allende. But I don't really know anybody else. So I told her to give me some names and she found it hard to find some of her favorites translated into English. So she found three of them and this was the only one that I could actually get. And it's called The Hour of the Star. And basically it says the devastating final work of Brazil's greatest modern writer, The Hour of the Star, tells the haunting tales of Macabea, a typist who lives in the slums of Rio, underfed, sickly, and unloved, yet inwardly free. So yeah, that sounds damned interesting. And yeah, so I'm going to give that, yeah, a, a go. I'm going to try because it looks interesting. 
Then I picked up To Be a Slave. And this was highly recommended by Dominique over at Token in America. She did an excellent review on To Be a Slave. And that's what pushed me over the edge. And that's why I picked it up. Now, this has received a, a Newbery Award. I'm not a fan of the way this book has been published because it's mighty light. The pages are like toilet paper or something. I don't know. I don't like books like that. It's just, you know, too flick flexible. But anyway, I'm going to get on to this one because she was saying how poignant it really was. And so I picked it up and here it is. And hopefully I will get to it this month. After that, I have picked up how to Talk to a Widower by Jonathan Tropper. Now, this is a story. It says, when Doug married Haley, beautiful, smart, and 10 years older, he left his carefree Manhattan life to live in the suburbs with her and her teenage son, Russ. Three years later, at 29, Doug has been a widower for 12 months and just wants to drown himself in self-pity and Jack Daniels. But his family has other ideas. Russ is furious with Doug for not adopting him and has fallen in with a bad crowd. Claire, Doug's ir irres irrepressible pregnant twin sister, has left her husband and uninvited moved in with Doug. And their sister, Debbie, is determined to have the perfect wedding at any cost. Now, you know, I bought this as a little bit of comic light relief because he has this this great way of telling some sad ass stories, but that they is some funny stuff in it. It makes you laugh. If you don't know Jonathan Tropper, he wrote This Is Where I Leave You, along with a series of other novels. But for some reason, I really like him. People probably equate him with Nick Hornby. Can't stand Nick Hornby. But when I read Jonathan Tropper's stories, they really, I mean, they, you really feel like you're in a man's mind. But for some reason, I don't mind. I find it funny and I find it, yeah, um, touching and it's just interesting to read. So I picked this one up, hopefully it'll be a little bit more, you know, a light read in between some of the other stuff that I'm reading, which is getting, it seems to be getting heavy and heavier, the things that I'm, you know, getting attracted to reading. So I picked that up. So that's all I have for the, that's the end of my Christmas book haul. You know, there's no more money left unless I decide to buy something, which I probably won't for a while because I'm pretty well fixed with books. Now, what am I reading at the moment? At the moment, I'm reading The Supremes at Earl's All You Can Eat. And I am, you know, like right there. So I've got like maybe another 200 pages to go and I'll be finished with this. It is interesting. And wow, it, this is really, uh, it's really pretty good. It's not at all what I expected, but it's really pretty good. So I'm kind of interested to see how this is going to turn and what the ending is going to be like. Because usually for books like this, what ruins it for me, the experience is the ending. But I don't know. I'm hopeful because it looks really good. And then I'm also reading, uh, I'm reading American Gods at the moment. Um, I will be starting that actually really well tonight because I haven't been able to pick it up because I've been reading, I've been reading Springs. And I have started reading... Crime and Punishment, which I'm reading at the same time along, you know, with uh, The Supremes. So, yeah, I haven't really gotten a chance to start up with American Gods properly. But I'm following, I'm going to be following along with uh, over on Goodreads with Estelle's group. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to read straight through American Gods. And I'll jump into the conversation once I'm at least halfway through or I finish the book. And hopefully I'll finish it by Friday or something. But I've been reading a bit of Crime and Punishment, but I'm really only at the... I've only read like the first 50 pages. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about like right there. You know, so I, I have all this to read. But I am buddy reading this with Grace over at Grace Eckmeyer. And that's done on purpose because I kind of want to understand what I'm reading. And Grace uh, knows a lot about uh, Russian literature. So uh, she said she would be happy to have me read along, you know, with her. So reading this, hopefully I will, you know, chalk this one out too. But I know it's a big, thick read because it is four. It's, no, it's 500 and... It's 550 pages. 
This is, if you haven't seen this edition, it's a vintage classics edition. So yeah, stay tuned for more on Crime and Punishment, probably with a review and everything. That is if I understand it well enough to even do a review that you can understand. I'm not sure I will be able to understand everything, but so far, so good, okay? So that's all I have for you guys today in book hauls and updates on reading. I hope you guys are having a great reading experience this week. And I hope to be back soon, probably with a review of The Supremes. Okay, bye-bye.